Now, some people may may not realise that um, you know you're providing a turnkey you know solution uh, in many occasions, whether that's um, fully automated or, or semi-automated, but you're also uh, ensuring that the, that the um, the line comes on stream and it's it's qualified for the customer. Now that's 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 again something that uh, you need a, a really a, a, not only a trained workforce yourselves uh, to, for for installation, but you're now dealing you know on a global scale. I mean, how are you expand? How's the business sort of expanding, and how do you manage that? What we do is uh, sell turnkey factories, and what our, our, our cry is into the world is we'll put you in the business. Now, because of the growth of the industry, there are almost no solar cell technology people around. They're all very well employed. So we offer a turnkey factory, which includes technology, it includes training, it includes source of materials, of course, it includes manufacturing components and we're distributing those uh, throughout the world. Uh, there, we have something like more than 50 of these factories going, and we service them principally out of our headquarters in Massachusetts, but we also have uh, an international organi representative organization, some of which have service support in 10 different countries. The area here with, with technology uh, the implementation of, of, say, for instance, the turnkey lines. But, you know, there's a lot of other related manufacturing technology uh, that's required. Could you explain, you know, what you're doing in that area? What's, what's, what's coming out? What's giving people um, uh, the incentive uh, to use Spire, especially uh, as, we, as we scale fabs as well? Well, Spire, uh, Spire's turnkey lines, we sell principally module assembly lines. We also sell cell assembly lines. So the question becomes one of, uh, how big a module, and the second question is how much automation. And each of the machines themselves have a significant amount of automation, but the direction is to begin to automate the intermediate steps, moving from stringer to laminator and so forth. So we're putting a lot of emphasis on automation of the whole line for some of the growing customers. Our basic line, by the way, uh, the most startup line is about 10 megawatts per year. So now we, we're designing and building 50 and 100 megawatt per year factories. These involve a lot of automation. The second part of it I think is important is we're going to bigger and bigger modules. We have uh, targeted the design of a line that we're working on now to produce one kilowatt modules, which is, you know, bigger than a, 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 a four by eight sheet of plywood. And that is driven by local manufacturing to provide that module for a local market because it's not something you would, you would want to uh, ship across the world. But so we're going more automation, bigger building block lines, and larger modules. Well, I, I find it interesting that um, uh, just, in, uh, just this year alone uh, that um, you've been winning um, you know, major turnkey uh, contracts uh, in, in Russia. Um, uh, Russia doesn't get a lot of attention in the PV sector, so how, how does that happen? I mean, what, what's going on in Russia? Well, the first thing you should re realize is we've been in this business over 25 years. So anyone who ever thinks about being in the photovoltaic industry starts with Spire. And, and so what we'd have is uh, we've had associations in Russia over years. Russia had a, a significant uh, technology base for space solar cells. And so many of these people now are looking for uh, options, better places to put their energy. And of course, they're, they're, they're quite aware of what's going on in the world and quite aware of the need for, for energy in Russia. So we're seeing uh, people come out of Russia with skills for photovoltaics that want to get into this business. And we're responding to that. And they know us, and they've known us for 20 years. But it, seem, it seems then, uh, I, I'm assuming that they're, they're wanting to just supply internally to Russia. They're not looking at, say, some of the Chinese producers who sell both into China, but, say, over 50% of some of their sales are then overseas. Is, is it, are they very much still focused on the, the Russian market? I think the Russians are focused on the Russian market. Uh, of course, they're just starting. 
You know, if I look at the total capacity uh, in Russia now, it's, it's, it's probably less than 50 megawatts per year, and most of which we supply. So that gets absorbed rather, very rapidly in, in Russia itself. Uh, and the companies that, that, that um, you've supplied these lines to, um, uh, again, are they startups or are they um, coming from uh, established companies, coming from other industries? The companies that we have supplied factories to, and there are two of them now, are related, and they were related by way of uh, government affiliations, laboratories within Russia. So one gentleman came out of those laboratories to establish a business, and then affiliated with it was another group in another location uh, which wanted to do the same thing. So it's kind of a network building in, going on now in Russia to, to build up the capacity for photovoltaics. You're um, also interesting, um, you know, f with your global footprint, shall we say. I um, uh, wanted to uh, understand um, what you see going on in, in places like India. India is, is the most exciting market for us right now. It is the uh, fastest growing market for adding capacity for photovoltaics in the world. It is going faster than China, and we've done a lot of work in China. India, of course, uh, has a lot of entrepreneurs, and I think that's stimulating the desire to get into this new business. And uh, there are, uh, it's a big country, uh, 1.3 billion people, a lot of sun, uh, needs energy, entrepreneurs, and money. Of course, they have significant resources now with the uh, internet boom and, and other things they do. So India is the place to be. It doesn't increase the entry point because our basic startup line, as I mentioned, is like 10 megawatts per year, and it's about $2 million. And a lot of new players want to start there, and we encourage them to do so. As their market expands and they need more product, we are able to expand that line. At that time, we can bring them up in a more automated fashion if they feel that's to, to their advantage. Some countries, of course, don't want a lot of automation. And then ultimately, we'll backward integrate them into cell making. But the entry point is not bad. In fact, uh, I believe there's going to be a significant trend in the US throughout the nation to enter module manufacturing at that 10 megawatt per year level, stimulated by local incentives for manufacturing. We're seeing that now. In Oregon, you get a 40% tax credit on all factory uh, investments. We see it in Virginia, we see it in Los Angeles. So more and more of that's going to happen, especially with the need for jobs. So we see a pro prolifer proliferation of small startup lines, which are not automated in the U.S. What's, what do you see as the future? What, what do you see? You're traveling the world, you're meeting with people. What, what's your vision of uh, uh, of what's happening in the next couple of years in this well, industry? Well, uh, yeah, we, we, we see the future is nothing but bright. Uh, we see the growth continuing for a decade. We see because uh, of the shortfall of polysilicon that we had in 2006, it held back some of the manufacturing. However, we expect the dam to break on polysilicon in 2009 in the cost to drop significantly on modules. We see crystalline silicon growing very rapidly as a percentage of the total market. We see it continue to dominate and even gain a little share. And we see that going on as, as far as the eye can see. So that's, that's our view of the future. We're very optimistic, very, very bullish on the future.